God and the highest peace and goodwill toward all men. Praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. Welcome to Greater Destiny Church of Tacoma, Washington, where we are transforming lives through purposeful ministry. We are a church led by love, living in power, and uplifted in praise. Our mission is to infuse a love and a passion for Christ in all people and to propel them to pursue their greater destiny in Jesus Christ. This is why we are here today, Sundays and Wednesdays, because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And certainly this morning there is a word just for you, 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 and you. So do me a favor, like and love and share this broadcast with everyone that you know and invite them to come on in where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Psalm 104 and 1 declares, Bless the Lord, O my soul, my great God. He is clothed in honor and majesty. This morning we have so much to bless the Lord for, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And as I always say, to rejoice is a choice. To praise the Lord is a choice. To bless the Lord is a choice. To clap your hands is a choice. To do your dance is a choice. To lift your hands is a choice. To sing your song is a choice. So this morning, we are going to sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth, for the Lord our God is mighty. He is a great king over all of the earth. And so this morning, as you come in, as you share this broadcast, I want you just to type, I believe God. Come on, just type, I believe God. This morning, the Lord impressed upon me to propel the people of the Most High God and to admonish you to declare your belief in the God of your salvation and in the God of all creation. For our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Come on, we've got to declare today, I believe God. I believe that God still saves. I believe that God still heals. I believe that God still delivers. I believe that God still frustrates the plans of the enemy and he causes his devices to come to naught. I believe God. Come on. I believe God for my family. I believe God for my health. I believe God for my wealth. For it is his will that we prosper and be in good health even as our souls prosper. Come on. I believe God for peace. I believe God for joy. I believe God for love. Come on. I believe God. Come on. Type it. I believe God even in this season. I believe God even during this pandemic. Come on. Type it. I believe God. Somebody needs to see that you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power unto God unto salvation. Come on, if you're not ashamed, say, I believe God. Come on, I believe in his power. I believe he died for me. I believe he got up again for me with all power in his hands. I believe that very same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that very same power that resurrected him, I believe that that power resides in me. Come on, somebody say, I believe God. Come on, I believe God. There's nothing too hard for God. All things are possible to them that believe God. It's not by your might. It's not by your power. But by his spirit, says the Lord, shall all things be accomplished. Why? Because you can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens you. Come on, I need you to type it today. I believe God. We live in a world full of chaos. We live in a world full of confusion. Come on, we live in a world full of uncertainty. But one thing that is certain, I believe God. I am confident in Him. I am confident in His love. I am confident in His grace. I am confident in His mercy. Come on. I believe God. I believe God. Come on. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Ghost. Come on. I believe God. I believe God. I don't care what CNN says. I believe God. I don't care what the doctors say. I believe God. Come on. I believe God. I believe God. Come on. I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. And so this morning, we're going to sing that we believe God. This is our declaration. I believe God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Come on. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Come on. Lord, I believe. That's what the Lord wants to hear today. He wants to hear you say, I believe. God. He wants to hear you say, I believe you, Lord. I trust in you with all of my heart. And I lean not to my own understanding, 
And in all thy ways, I acknowledge you uh, for you to direct my path. So come on, right where you are, clap your hands, come on. Clap, clap, clap your hands, come on. Oh, yes. We're going to have church this morning. Somebody say, I'm going to have church this morning. Somebody say, I'm going to have church this morning. Listen, phase one, two, or three, I'm going to have church this morning. Come on, come on.
Yeah. 
hearts are focused. Our hearts are transfixed on yes. what you're doing yes, and what you desire to do in us. We thank you for the intrinsic cleansing in your presence even now. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You're a holy God. And it is your desire that we would be holy even as you are holy. So we thank you for sanctifying our hearts today, purifying our hearts. Oh God, we thank you that we can present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. And we will not be conformed to this world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And we will not be conformed to this world, for this world has patterns and systems and cycles. But we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we thank you because we recognize that our hearts are encapsulated of the mind, the will, and the emotions. So thank you for transformation this morning. Oh, thank you for transformation this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that we have put off distractions to adapt focus this morning. We are focused on you. We look to you. We look to the hills which come with our help. For our help comes from the Lord which made the heavens and the earth. Ah, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, we thank you for sealing our praise and sealing our worship and sealing this prayer. <laughs> amen. Amen. Glory to God. You know, as Sister Tiffany was flowing in worship this morning, I know that the Lord was speaking through her and using her today because it is in direct alignment and conjunction with the word for today. And I believe that the Lord has already spoke expressly. <laughs> I believe that the Lord has already spoke expressly. So as he has spoke expressly to you today, let us hear what the written word has to say. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ by the will of God. Ephesians 1, 1 through 3. To the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus the Christ. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And as Apostle Paul is writing this to the church of Ephesus. He's writing to admonish the people of God to realign their focus. Because their focus was downward. Their focus was on the things that could only be seen. Understand that our carnal nature does not always value spiritual things. Our carnal nature says, because I have a nice car, I'm blessed. Our carnal nature says, because I have a big house, I'm blessed. Our carnal nature says, because I have money in the bank, I'm blessed. Our carnal nature says, because I have not contracted any deadly disease, I'm blessed. But understand that it is not God's desire that we build our hopes, our faith, and our trust and our belief on the things which are temporal, on the things which moth and mold and rust do grow upon. But it is his desire that we focus and that we align ourselves with spiritual blessings, recognizing that you're not blessed because of what's in your hand. You're blessed because of what he releases to place in our hearts. And so you're not blessed because everything in your life is going well because you know we're quick to say when someone asks us how are you doing, ooh, I'm blessed because we got a job, because we have the things we want, we consider ourselves to be blessed. But do we ever consider that 
Although we may not always have the things we want in our hands, when we possess spiritual blessings, he gives us the things that we need in our hearts. Sometimes, spiritual blessings are not seen by the natural eye. Because spiritual blessings can only be revealed to the spiritual eye. And they can only be comprehended to those that are spiritual. It is imperative that we understand that real sustainable blessings are spiritual blessings. Real sustainable blessings, real blessings with longevity are spiritual blessings. This is why people can have billions and billions of dollars in the bank. They can have five houses and a beach house and 10 cars, but still commit suicide because they were more focused on their physical blessings. They were more focused on the things that could be seen, that they had no relationship or no cognitivity, that heaven has spiritual blessings that outweigh the natural blessings. First Corinthians chapter two, verses nine through 11. <laughs> but as it is written, I see many times we read this particular text and we shout off this text because it makes it seem as though to us that, oh my God, God has some things in store that I don't even know about. God has some things in store that you don't even know about. Yes, in part that is true, but let's get the full understanding, the full context. But as it is written, eye has not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Well, let's get the full context, verse 10. But God has revealed unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. You are absolutely correct. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, rather the mind of man. So no, your natural eye hasn't seen it. No, your natural ear has not heard it. No, your natural mind has not been able to conceive it. But your spiritual mind, your spiritual mind, your spiritual ear. He that hath an ear, a spiritual ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Uh, God can reveal those things to you because the Spirit searches all things and the Spirit reveals even the deep things of God. And this is why verse 11 says, he said, but let, less rather, the enemy, the devil, Satan, can get advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. You are not ignorant of the devices because of what you know in the natural. You're only, excuse me, you're not ignorant of the devices because of what you know in the natural. But you are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy because of what the spirit reveals through wisdom, spiritual blessings. <laughs> through discernment, spiritual blessings. Through prophecy, Spiritual blessings, the word of knowledge, spiritual blessings, revelation and illumination by the spirit, spiritual blessings in heavenly places. This is why it's important that we are focused on him. The Bible says, set your affections on things that are what? Above, above, above. Because there are things in the spirit that God wants to reveal to his people. But we have to be on the same frequency as the Spirit. How do we get on the same frequency? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. How do we get on the same frequency? Not my will, not my way, but your will, your way. How do we get on the same frequency? We say, yes, Lord. We obey and we trust him. Now the Greek word for blessing, hear this, the Greek word for blessing is the word eulogia. Eulogia. And it means benefit. This is why the psalmist declared, bless the Lord who loadeth me daily with benefits. Bless the Lord who loadeth me daily with benefits. Well that word is translated as blessings. But these are spiritual blessings. 
And as Apostle Paul is referring to these spiritual blessings here in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, he wants us to recognize that these are the blessings that God provides to us for us to live. For it is in him that we live, move, and have our being. This is why, saints of God, you can have $5 in the bank. But when you have the spiritual blessing of peace that surpasses all understanding, you learn to be content. You learn that, okay, I got to have peace in this situation because God is working on something on the other side of what I'm going through even now. This is why you can count it all joy. Joy, a spiritual blessing. You can have joy in the midst of sorrow. Oh my gosh, you can have joy in the midst of situations and obstacles and circumstances that come to rock the very core of your being. But you can still have joy, recognizing, listen, <laughs> I can smile, I can laugh, because I know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within. I'm talking about spiritual blessings. When you do not embrace, when you do not receive, when you do not possess spiritual blessings, your life is in constant turmoil. Your life is in constant chaos. You become double-minded. You're not of singleness of mind. And the Bible says to Jacob, a double-minded man is unstable, unstable in all of his ways. Spiritual blessings that Apostle Paul is referring to, they're not just ideas. But these are the blessings that the Lord releases to us from the heavens that give us oxygen to continue to be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know our labor is not in vain. These spiritual blessings give us the fortitude to recognize, ah, oh my God, that yes, I'm suffering. But after I have suffered a while, you do realize that when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit according to Galatians chapter 5, long suffering is one of the virtues of His Spirit. <laughs> he said, after you have suffered a while, I will strengthen you. I will settle you. I will make you perfect. I will establish you. But you have to possess the spiritual blessings. You have to acknowledge the spiritual blessings that God has bestowed upon you in order to be in that place of fortitude, that place of focus, that place of fortification. Throughout the passage of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 through 19, Apostle Paul names nearly 15 spiritual blessings. There are 15 spiritual blessings named in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 through 19. I'm not going to go through all of them today because uh, we don't have the time to do that, but I want to call your attention to three of those spiritual blessings that we have in Jesus Christ. This is why we can do all things through Jesus Christ, because in Jesus Christ, he gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And so, number one, we have the forgiveness of sin. Verse 7, Ephesians 1 and 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Listen, in our lives, not just last year, not 10 years ago, but some of us yesterday, some of us this week, uh, there are some things that we have done that we know have been diametrically opposed to the instructions and the laws of God. We have consciously rebelled. We committed those sins that said, okay, I'm going to do this and I'll ask God for forgiveness later. We committed those sins that said, all right, I'm going to put down my religion for right now. Yet we, we consciously, we committed sins knowingly. We ignored his wisdom. And we thought ourselves to be wiser than him. But can I tell you that one of the spiritual blessings of heaven is forgiveness. This is why you don't have to die and go to hell. Because you can ask the Lord for forgiveness. Jesus Christ shed his blood for the remissions of your sin. Listen, his blood purchased your salvation. His blood paid a price for the debt that you owe. But his blood said paid in full. One of the spiritual blessings that we receive through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with him, is forgiveness. And so as he has forgiven us, 
we have to forgive. This is why Jesus taught the disciples to pray. He said, forgive us of our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Who are you holding a grudge against today? Who are you withholding forgiveness from today? Because you think that you're right. You think that you have no right to be upset. You have no right to be angry. The Bible says, be angry, sin not. Then say we would not get angry. In fact, to be angry also means really to be given a command. It's okay to be angry. Oh, y'all don't like that. It's okay to be angry. We should be angry when we see things that are happening that are not godly, that are not justice, that are not merciful. We should be angry. We should become enraged. But the Bible says be angry. Sin not. So we can be angry when someone hurts our feelings. We can be angry when someone trespasses against us. But we can't sin. And what is sin? Withholding forgiveness. We are to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. All right? So the first spiritual blessing that we receive through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, these are blessings in heavenly places through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Forgiveness of sins is number one. The riches of his grace abound to you. And I'm going to take time, just a little time, and really teach this today. Because there's no point in getting you all hyped up and you don't even know what the heavens possess for you. Some of us are living beneath our privilege. We can't just live off of you're coming out tomorrow. We're not coming out tomorrow, saints of God. The riches of his grace abound to you. First, forgiveness of sin. Two, the riches of his grace abound to you. Going to read verses uh, 7, we'll read verse 8. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. And this is tagging on to verse 7, where it said, In whom we have received, we have received redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Now, when we think about that word grace, breaking that word grace down in the Greek is charis. Charis. Charis translated in the English vernacular is charity. All of us needed the charity of his grace. Before we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why? Because we needed him to do it. The work of Christ on the cross was a form of charity extended to us. Grace means unmerited favor. Abound means to have an abundance. In Christ, there is an abundant measure of unmerited favor flowing in our lives. It's like a river that lasts from here to the never-ending depths of eternity. Now, I'm telling you and I'm talking to you about eternal blessings. I'm talking to you about blessings that do not expire. I'm turning, talking to you about blessings that do not go out of style. Spiritual blessings, spiritual blessings in high places, spiritual blessings in heavenly places with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that he extends to us. Forgiveness and grace. Grace. When we receive what we don't deserve. Grace that empowers us to do. Grace that rests on us. When we see other people doing things and they're working and operating, it's like, why does it seem so difficult for them to do what they're doing? It's because sometimes they don't have the grace to do what they're doing. But when they see you operating in ministry, they see you raising your children, they see you working a job and, and doing a project, and it looks so easy, it's because you have been graced to do it. He gives us grace. And lastly, first, forgiveness. Come on, spiritual blessings. Second, his grace. Lastly, the exceeding greatness of his power. We have power, saints of God. The heavenly realm is Filled with all types of dimensions of power. Angelic host, thrones, dominions, uh, virtues, powers. Ephesians 1, 19-20. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who what? Believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. 
Paul says the exceeding greatness of his power towards you that believe. Towards you that believe. You that trust. You that have faith. You that have hope in Christ. What kind of power is this? This is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. It is the same power that conquered sin, death, hell, and the grave. In Christ, this power is present in us today. Saints of God, you heard the woman of God, Sister Tiffany, as she was worshiping. And I know that that was prophetic worship that would give us entree to his word today. For the word of God brings forth light, illumination, and to give it understanding to the simple. So what did the Lord have to say to us today? First, he challenged us to confess our belief. Mm -hmm. Today we had to hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, recognizing that he that promised is faithful. I believe, I believe, I believe. Then the prophetic worship came forth to challenge us. Well, if you believe, then focus on him. Because your attention is scattered. He does not have our undivided attention. You're trying to give me everything else. You're trying to give me a hand clap. You're trying to give me your tongues. You're trying to give me a dance, but your heart is not transfixed on me. So I don't want your heart, not all the extra stuff. And so then here, the written word comes to you. The written word comes to you. Yes, the word today is I am blessed. I can confess that I am blessed not because of what I have, but because of who he is and what he possesses. And so we have to be focused, saints of God, on our spiritual blessings. Listen to this in our closing. So even as he is seated in heavenly places, we have to come up to where he is. The reason why we are so distracted and why our focus seems like it's depleting is because we're too low. So now we've got to come up. So now we've got to remember that the scripture tells us that we are seated in heavenly places with him. Ephesians 1, 21 through 23. So he's seated and we're seated far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Saints of God, you're blessed. You're blessed because you have spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But listen, those spiritual blessings in heavenly places, they are not beyond your reach. You are right there with them because you are seated in heavenly places with Christ. So whatever you need, all you have to do is reach out to receive it. The old saints used to sing a song that says, God's got a blessing for you. God's got a blessing for you. If you want it, reach out and get it. Reach out and grab it. And so, and so because I'm not down here, like, God, please, please, please. He said, no, come on up, 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 come on up. I am blessed to have a seat in heavenly places with Christ. I have access to everything that heaven has for me. Forgiveness, grace, his unmerited favor, and power. Listen, because I'm seated in heavenly places, uh, when we fight, we recognize, thanks to God, that we are in spiritual warfare. Oh, yes, there are many satanic agents. There are organized um, quadrants in the earth realm. Oh, yeah. But we understand from where we are seated, we've got plenty of ammunition in the spirit. We're blessed because we don't fight by ourselves. We've got seraphims, which is the highest ranking level of the angelic host who sit fire, who release fire from heaven. We have the cherubims. We have the thrones. There are thrones in heaven. We have powers. We have virtues that back us up in the spirit. He fills our quiver with arrows. And we release those arrows from the heavens. And we shoot down 
We fight from the air. And we conquer because we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. I know this morning was a little different. May not have been as hypey and excited as you may have wanted it to be. But saints of God, this is not the season for hype. This is the season where we have to know who we are and we have to declare who we are through Jesus Christ. Somebody just type, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. Come on, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. No more am I gonna predicate my blessings based on what I have. I'm going to predicate my blessings based on who I know. Come on. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Come on. He loaded me daily with benefits. He loaded me daily with favor. He loads me daily with grace. He loads me daily with mercy. He loads me daily with power because I am blessed. Glory to God. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this word this morning. Thank you for the prophetic worship that has gone forth. You, the spirit of the living God, you have spoken expressly. And we hear you, for we have an ear to hear. Now it is the spirit that quickened it. And we thank you that we have life through you, Jesus Christ. And the words that you speak, they are spirit and life. We thank you for Numa that has been released to every home from coast to coast and around the world. We thank you for the breath of your word that has blown on the minds of your people. For all scripture is given by the inspiration or the breath of God. And it is profitable for reproof, for rebuke and instruction. We thank you this morning that we have profited greatly from hearing the Logos, the written word of God. And now we can declare, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now we can declare that I believe. Now we can declare I am focused. Now we can decree I am blessed. I'm not blessed because of what I have in my hand. I'm blessed because of what I have in my heart. What has been downloaded. What has been imparted, what has been imputed. We thank you for it today. <laughs> we thank you for your power. Oh, we are blessed. 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 They can see it. Uh -huh. They can see it. 
spiritual person to see bad things. People, now I see demons. Oh, you're so black. Oh my God, I guess. Listen, you can be Hindu and Buddhist. You can be a Jehovah's Witness and recognize a bad spirit. But you got to be spiritual to see the things of his spirit. Yeah, people may say, you know, there's something about you, but they can't identify it because they're not of the spirit of grace. They can, oh, he's a nice person. I'm more than just a nice person. Come on. I'm more than just a good person. Uh, I'm spiritually blessed. Uh, you can't identify it because you're not spiritual. Uh, uh, but I'm more than just a sweet person. Oh my God, I'm the 
a second wind. I'm trying, I feel a second wind. I just felt a quickening in my spirit. The Bible declares in 2 Thessalonians. Let me get it, let me get it. I gotta get this, I gotta get this. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 18. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Say to the Most High God, I want to tell you that this week is going to be a sweatless week of victory. This week is going to be a week of ease. This week, you are getting ready to move forth in a level of strength that you've not experienced in a long time. Why? Because Satan is not going to hinder you this week. Oh my God, oh my God. See, see, now that we believe God, and now that we have our focus, and now that we have confessed that we are blessed with spiritual blessings in heavenly places, now we can rejoice, now we can give him praise, because there's nothing that the devil can do to hinder us, there's nothing that the devil can do to provoke us, there's nothing that the devil can do to stop us. Somebody just type right now that Satan cannot hinder